2020 guys I hope you all had a great new year let's start off the year right so this time we're gonna talk about why you should save stay tuned what's up guys it's Shauna aka Mrs. Wealthy Wallet coming to you for another year guys it is 2020 are you guys ready to do this let's make some changes to change our generational family tree make it more profitable this year so my question this month is well let me quit let me correct that my question this week is why should you save why should you save truthfully well think about it how many times have you had that oh my god it's an emergency where i need something like my car breaks down Oh, I need to be told, oh my God, the tire just went flat. Oh wow, I need to get two tires instead of just one. Or my refrigerator just broke down. Plumbing is not working. You know, anything along those lines. Hey, I have a relative who is sick. I live in Atlanta and they live up in Chicago and I need to get there ASAP. And once I get there, I need a way to get to them. So you have emergencies that come up why would you not want to save why would you just want to put it on a credit card that's already stressed out and giving you stress because you're trying to pay it off so it's great to be all gung-ho and moving ahead to pay off your debt but you should also take time to save guys why do we want to save because of Murphy dropping into your house and taking up residence. Murphy is an a-hole and we don't like him, okay? He is evil. He is looking for any and every opportunity to get up in your business and wreck all your stuff. You know, just wreck your whole flow, mindset, your financial life, the whole nine. So just saving a cushion helps you keep, as Dave Ramsey says, Murphy at bay. Now I was watching Market Watch today and I was watching a couple from Atlanta, A Town representing, <laughs> rich and regular, and they were saying that the black savings rate is declining. It is on its way to zero dollars, guys. Zero. Nothing. We are on the way to saving nothing. Why? Why is it so important to floss all the time? You got to have the perfect clothes, the perfect shoes, the perfect car, the perfect apartment, the perfect house. And we are house poor. For real? Seriously? I know you watch this channel for a reason because you want to change that family tree and you want to change that whole dynamic. So that's why I'm saying we need to start saving. Start small. Start saving your change. Start doing something as simple as the penny challenge. What I'm doing, which is 2020 for 2020, just yeah. start saving. The thing is, you can talk about, oh, it's too hard. I'm so frustrated. I just can't do it. Or you can get up and do it. The difference between talking about it and doing it is action. Just take the action to do it, guys. I have a frequent commenter here, and Tony, I'm calling you out today, who has an amazing savings rate. He watches his money. He's picked his career path because he wants to save for financial independence. And I love cheering him on in his journey, y'all. Just like he cheers me on at paying off this student loan, student loan balance going up again, guys. Here it is, student loans, yes. Just like he cheers me in paying off this student loan balance so that I can increase my savings rate, I'm cheering y'all to get started with saving for 2020. Change your dynamic. We are in a new decade, it's time to do something new. When I saw that feature on Market Watch, guys, that really shocked me because I could not believe that we are draining all our dollars. I've seen a lot of positivity, like Tony, like Creative Lifestyle Blog, who will be starting her YouTube channel soon. That is my call to action for you, girl. Come on now. Um, like, uh, love daring greatly. You know, there are plenty of us out there that actually save, but it's not enough of us. So I am putting a call to action to you all 
to come on and do this savings. I am putting a link, I've probably put it up here a couple of times, to that actual rich and regular feature on the market watch for the fire starter series as well as you all go ahead and watch all of them because you can see how people of lower incomes who have not made large amounts of money still manage to get to early retirement still manage to get a nest egg still manage to get that passive income going just by watching your money I know a thing with me is I'm really bad about restaurants. I'm really bad about groceries and things like that. Before I even started this student loan journey, guys, I was like, oh, we're so strapped for cash. I can't figure out where we're going to get this cash from. Yeah, yeah. Oh, my God. We're so, oh. And one day I looked at our annual spending on restaurants and it was somewhere around twelve dollars to $14,000. I'm just saying. Who spends that much on restaurants? And most of it was on credit cards, so don't think it was in cash. Yeah. So that's why I was just like, um, rewind, back it up. We can do a little bit better about that. So honestly, this year, my husband and I, I, I got him some uh, new tools for the kitchen, and I'm getting in the kitchen with him, and we are trying out some new recipes because we are cutting continuously that restaurant budget because last year we didn't do nowhere near that thank god and this year i plan to top last year's so i'm going to continue to decrease the amount of money i'm wasting on that another thing i'm doing to stop me from spending so much money is a no buy guys a no buy i'm trying to stop buying so many planner supplies if you all could see my room right now it is covered in planner supplies. I got a planner channel. That's another subject. But I have enough right here, right now, to supply that planner channel for an entire two to three years. So many stickers. Does not make any sense. But I am doing a no buy on that. But in the same token, I'm stretching myself to do a low to no buy for myself for this month as well. If that goes well, I'm gonna continue it into the next month and the next month. And you know what I'm doing with that? I'm trying to see how much money I cannot spend. I got even more money to save. And I am saving. This is my why. Because I want to reach financial independence. And I wanna reach it before 65. I am 40 right now. I want to reach financial independence probably in my 50s and push it as far back into my early 50s as possible and in order to do that I've got to watch my spending make sure I'm saving my cushion and pay off any excess debt so what's in my way right now student loans student loans are in my way so as soon as I get that paid off, I'm going to increase my Roth. I'm going to increase my 401k. I am going to increase our real emergency fund. Now, let's talk about emergency funds while we're talking. I have an emergency fund for rainy days. That emergency fund is also a car fund. So there's $1,000 in that emergency fund for a rainy day. There's also somewhere between five and $600 right now in there for the car fund. Why? Because cars need tires, cars need oil changes, cars need service, period. So I have a fund just for that. The real emergency fund is going to be building up my three to six months expenses when I pay off the student loans is going to be building up to a year of expenses. It may take me some time, but we're going to get there. The reason why I want this money is for financial security. That means that if anything goes wrong in life, that I have security. He loses his job, I lose my job. Financial security. 
I have the emergency fund over here. Just in case Murphy decides to knock a water pipe loose in my house. I have the real emergency fund over here. Just in case someone decides they don't need a supervisor anymore. Because we're both supervisors. So, in case someone decides, mm, we're good. We can float along until something better comes along or something else comes along. You know, we have that security. Eventually, what I would like to do is get to a point where we can say, adios work world, we're going to go enjoy our hobbies full time. So I will be able to do full time YouTube and he will be able to do full time woodwork, you know, things like that. But for right now, for me and my household, we're going to save. And you need to start saving that money. Start with a small emergency fund. Try to build up over the next two months a $250 emergency fund. Basically, you could do something as simple as instead of spending your money on the debit card, take it out in cash. Whatever you have left over in those categories, take that money, put it into a savings account and put it in a savings account that's not attached to your checking account, guys. Don't attach it to your checking account. Make it so that it takes you at least two to three days. That's what I do. I have my savings account somewhere else and my checking account in another place. So make sure you put it in a savings account, leave it there. Just know that the savings account is not a, oh, that sweater's cute account. It is not a, oh, I like those shoes. It's not a, oh my God, it's a once in a lifetime sale that I was not expecting to go to and all of a sudden they're having it and I must go to it now account. It is for you to say, for true emergencies. I understand that it's going to go up and down. That's what it's supposed to be for. That is what your emergencies are supposed to be for. But go ahead and start saving. Save that emergency fund. Once you get used to saving for that emergency fund and you don't miss that money and you got that emergency fund up to $1,000, start saving for other things. You know, you'll start finding different places where you can save money. And next thing you know, you don't even miss the money. It is so easy once you get started. But the problem is getting started. So don't hem and haw. You got to go back. Look at your expenses. Look at your bank statement. Or look through all your receipts. And see what you've been spending money on. If you've been spending money on fast food, if you've been spending money on Starbucks, but if you've just been spending money because you go to Target to get one thing and you get like 15 things, then start looking at those and look and look under your counter, look in your cabinets. Got Do an audit of what you got in your house right now. Really look at this stuff and that's going to tell you where your priorities are. Just start. That's all you need to do. It's 2020. It's a brand new year. Just get started. So until next time, guys, remember that the only type of wallet there is, is going to be a wealthy one. And we are working on getting there. So until next time, guys, peace.